This video is intended for my AP Biology students. We are on Unit 5 right now about heredity, and we have started discussing meiosis. And in a previous video um, that I made, which I encourage you to watch, um, is we have already talked about the purpose of um, sexual reproduction. We have already talked about how how um, meiosis increases the variety. We talked about um, crossing over. We talked about independent assortment. And we talked about random sperm fertilizing random eggs and how this increases variety. And then we have also gone over the steps already of meiosis. So in this video, we are going to talk about changes in chromosome structure and chromosome number. So I'm going to go ahead and present here we go gulp usually because any changes for us as humans are going to have some consequences um, to deal with so in plants a lot of these changes that can happen they seem to be able to handle it a little bit better than us. So this, if you're looking at the unit guides, this is under 5.6. And so we've already talked a little bit about the, the first topic right here. Um, and we're gonna hit this more once we've discussed chapter 11 and gone over Mendelian and non-Mendelian inheritance. But I'm really focusing here on this third um, topic. Certain human gen genetic disorders can be attributed to the inheritance of a single affected or mutated allele or specific chromosomal changes such as non-disjunction. Non so first thing we need to talk about is a chromosomal mutation is a change in the number of chromosomes you have or in the structure. Now, down in the descriptor of this video, I have um, the scaffolding of notes that my students use. So I help them fill in column one and they throw in pictures in column two. So on these notes, I am in uh, 10.6, changes in chromosome number and structure. So first thing I wanna show you here is what non-disjunction is. Non-disjunction is failure to separate. Now remember in meiosis, there are two divisions. In meiosis one, you're separating the homologous pairs and you're forming two cells as a result of that. In meiosis two, you're separating sister chromatids. So if you have meiosis and if you have non-disjunction in meiosis one, so you're not doing anaphase correctly, then the homologous pairs are gonna to go together to one daughter cell and the other daughter cell is gonna get nothing. So in, in, if this failure occurs in meiosis one, all of the gametes will be altered as a result of that. If non-disjunction, failure to separate, happens in one of the two cells made as a result of meiosis one, then only half of the gametes will be altered, the other half should be fine. So non-disjunction by definition is failure of either homologous pairs or sister chromatids to separate. So that's how you can get the number wrong for your, um, for your gametes and then the resulting zygote when those gametes Views. So a karyotype is where you often see, you, it is a, a photographic image of the chromosomes. And now um, those uh, you can use a computer program to arrange them into their homologous pairs. Remember, when we see the chromosomes, when they appear in their rod shapes, it's going to be because they're either going through mitosis or meiosis, right, when they form the rod shapes. So here you can see them sorted to their homologous pairs. And each chromosome consists of, you can see, sister chromatids. So a karyotype is a visual display of the chromosomes arranged by size, shape, and banding pattern, a visual display. So when you talk about numbers, you can have, and I'm using my Goldilocks here where she needs it to be just right. If you have one whole extra set of chromosomes, that's called polyploidy. We don't survive if we form a polyploid. Plants though can. Sometimes their fruit is bigger, they actually select for it. If you have an incorrect number, it's um, onuploidy, any kind of incorrect, either extra chromosomes or you don't have quite enough. Euploidy is what you're after and that's when it's just right. So on your notes, euploidy is the correct number of chromosomes. So now when we look at the different numbers or look at the, the chromosomes, here you can see that we have 
22 homologous pairs of chromosomes, if you kind of look across here. The 23rd pair, if you look right here, here's an X and a Y. So that those are your sex chromosomes. So for males, they are not homologous. They are not the same size, same shape, encoding for the same characteristics. They're two very different chromosomes. So autosomes are homologous pairs for sure, one through 22. Okay, now what do you see in this karyotype? Where is there a problem anywhere? Can you find it? Give you just a second. Okay, hopefully you saw this right here. This is trisomy 21. This is the most um, common um, autosomal anomaly, in, autosomal anomaly. So where you in your first 22 pairs, these chromosomes are very, very small and they have a hard time doing um, separating during anaphase. And this is more likely in somebody whose eggs are older. So this increases um, in any female that gets pregnant over the age of 40. All right, so when you look here, we can see again the 22 homologous pairs. And then for a female, it's XX. For a male, it is XY. So the sex chromosomes are the 23rd pair of chromosomes, and they are not homologous in males. They are not homologous in males. All right? So um, XX is female. You already have this on your notes. XY is male. So do you remember in a previous chapter when we were talking about mitosis, we talked about euchromatin versus heterochromatin. And hetero is, means different and it's dark staining and this is DNA that's tightly coiled and put away, whereas euchromatin is not staining and this is your active DNA, DNA that's actively getting transcribed and translated. So this is the whole thing is the nucleus, this region right here is the nucleolus. Now, um, because females have a double dose of the X chromosome, so think about that, right? Because a male is successful and it has a single X and a single Y. Females have a dosage issue in that we have two X chromosomes. So one of the X chromosomes in each of our body cells tightly condenses into, into an X, uh, or sorry, heterochromatin. And that is called a bar body. So when you look at the zygote right here, you've got two X's, right? One from mom, one from dad. And you don't know, this creates a mosaic because you don't know which X is going to condense in each cell. So um, a bar body is an additional X chromosome that condenses and can only be seen under a microscope. You have one, nor this, to be normal, you would have one bar body in females. So one in normal females, but would males have a bar body? And the answer is no, right? Because they will use that single X that they have. So here, I think I have one more picture. Yeah, so here you can see what a bar body would look like inside of a nucleus. All right, so now let's talk about aneuploidy. When um, you have a monosomy, this is your diploid number for us is 46 and minus one. That means for one of your homologous pairs, you only got one. A trisomy, this would be two and 20, 23 is our N number. So that'd be 46 plus one, that would be 47. So that means we have an extra chromosome like I showed you in Down syndrome. So, in Down syndrome, this is trisomy 21. And what they realized is the issue is that you have an extra copy of the GART gene. Because where you have this trisomy and you do not have this extra copy of this GART gene, if it's been removed in some way, then um, individuals are actually don't show those symptoms of Down syndrome. So on your notes, let's get a couple things you already have. Um, Onuploidy is the incorrect number of chromosomes. Trisomy is 2n plus 1, monosomy 2n minus 1, and then trisomy Down syndrome. Okay, it is the most common autosomal trisomy. Um, characteristics of this syndrome is shortened stature, usually heart problems and intellectual disabilities. Um, chances of this syndrome increase with the age of the mother. You can fill in your notes there. Most common autosomal trisomy increases with age of the, no of the mother. Now, you can also have trisomies and monosomies when you're referring to the sex chromosome. So normal female is 2X, but if you're a single X, this is called Turner syndrome. Um, this is a trisomy. Normal males are XY, but if they are XXY, um, this is called Kleinfelters. Now, 
Unlike females where you can survive with a single X, males do not survive if all they have is the Y chromosome. So on changes in chromosome number, Turner syndrome, you are a female. So look right here and see if you can spot that in these two karyotypes. So here you can see she has correct all of her autosomes, but here she has a single X. And then over here, you can see the trisomy for this individual with Kleinfelters. So XO is the way it's referred to in Turner syndrome. You are female, short in stature. stature. Usually you can lead very normal lives with um, hormone supplements. Um, and that is a generalization there. And then Kleinfelter syndrome is XXY. Um, you are a male. You have an increased risk for some disorders, sterility, um, a little bit longer arms and legs. And um, can you guess the bar bodies? Okay. So if you have Turner syndrome, you should not have any bar bodies because you only have a single X. And in Kleinfelter's, you would have a bar body because you have an extra X as a male. Um, there are other syndromes as well. Poly X females, um, you have three X's. Um, you tend to be tall, thin, wide set eyes. And I have that um, reduced in the notes just in case if you um, were interested. And then XYY is Jacob syndrome. So this is a trisomy with an extra Y chromosome. And they used to say that this extra Y, they would say it has to do, it's genetic um, in your nature then to be more violent and to act out more because statistically speaking, there's a higher percentage of Jacob syndrome in prison than in in the general population. But then they started to think, you know, when you look at nature versus nurture, individuals with the extra Y chromosome, um, they tend to be taller, acne, speech and reading problems. And what they're finding out is that probably people were just cruel and made fun of individuals who were XYY. And as a result of that, that defense mechanism maybe ended up getting them into more trouble. So it wasn't a factor of the Y chromosome. So just one thing I would say there is kindness, right? Kindness is the best way to go. So now let's talk about changes. Those were all changes in number. Let's talk about changes in structure. So in this case, you could have a deletion. So maybe you're doing a crossing over event and you don't get the uh, reattachment of the sister chromatin. This is a duplication. Maybe there was a crossing over event uh, during prophase one, remember when they do synapsis, and maybe one crossed over and the other did not. So you have a duplication of these alleles right here. You can see the repeat in DE. So on your notes, you have deletion, you're missing a portion, and in duplication, you have an extra segment of a chromosome. Also, you could have inversions where through the process of crossing over, a piece of the chromatid gets flipped. That would be an inversion. And then um, translocations, this is really bad. This is when you do synapsis and cross over, not with your homologous pair, but an entirely different chromosome. So an inversion for your notes is a flipped segment and translocation is movement of a chromosome segment from one chromosome to another of a non-homologous chromosome. Now, all of these can cause minimal or maximum problems. I'll just give you a few examples here. Um, this is Williams syndrome, and this is a result of a deletion. And within the syndrome, they look at it's kind of that pixie-like look, um, turned up noses, wide mouth, small chins, large ears. Academic skills can be poor, but they can be very strong in the arts. Um, poor health and cardiovascular system and skin ages prematurely. So this is a result of a syndrome due to a deletion. Um, cri du chat, this means in French cry of the cat, these individuals, um, they are missing a segment of um, chromosome five um, and they can also have intellectual disabilities. Um, this one is allogyle syndrome, distinctive facial features. You can have problems with internal organs, severe itching. Um, symptoms range in diversity. This father didn't even realize that he had it until the daughter had similar and more advanced um, symptoms. So this was a translocation. All right. So those are just examples of changes in number and structure. But what I want you to get from this whole chapter on meiosis is this increases variety. And remember, it's that variation in species 
um, where it can lead to different adaptations that make one organism more fit for one environment than another. And this is what you need um, in order to see um, evolution, right? I mean, you can have other ways, you can have variety is just through mutations, um, but this one leads to adaptations. And that um, is the end.